Hello everybody, this is Neelam Path Lectures and we are with Pursue Series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We have a Telegram group which you can join to access all lecture related information. All the PDF of lectures are available on the Google Drive. We have a master integration key where, whereupon you can navigate between the PDF and the YouTube. These are the disclaimers. We are with phase three, which is recorded pathology lectures. And we have Pursue 26 in dermatopathology and we are streaming from IPGMR. The topic of the day is alopecia. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Anandita Mandal, who is an MBBS MD in pathology. She's a senior resident in IPGMR, SSKM Hospital, Kolkata, with areas of interest in oncopathology, histopathology, and cytopathology. I would request ma'am to start her lecture on alopecia. Over to you, Dr. Anandita. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Today, my topic is alopecia. So what does alopecia means? Alopecia means literally the loss of hair. How do we diagnose alopecia? The proper histologic diagnosis of alopecia requires an optimal scalp biopsy. Now, how the scalp biopsies are performed, we will look onto it later. Scalp biopsies are performed mainly to diagnose scarring versus non-scarring alopecia, identify the type of non-scarring alopecia, establish disease activity in scarring alopecia by assessing the presence and the density of inflammation and follicular scarring. For scarring alopecia, one horizontal and one vertical specimen is used. For non-scarring alopecia, only a horizontal specimen is used. Scalp biopsies, as we have talked, uh, comprises of horizontal and vertical sections. Horizontal sections allows us for follicular assessment, follicular counts and the ratios. Most practice technique is the Headington technique in which the specimen is dissected in the horizontal plane one millimeter above the derm dermis or the subdermis or one millimeter below the dermoepidermal junction. So this is an example of a horizontal section on the left hand side and a vertical section on the right hand side. The left hand side, the horizontal sections, it shows the follicular architecture and uh, it shows about 14 follicular units, 20 follicles. And on the right hand side, we can see the vertical section showing only six follicles and uh, the vertical sections does not allow us for a precise follicular assessment. This, in this slide, we can see the two other techniques of scalp biopsy specimen processing. In the section uh, photograph A, we can see the Holver technique in which the specimen is transected one millimeter below the skin surface to create an epidermal disc and a lower portion. The epidermal disc is then bisected and embedded in a conventional fashion. The lower portion is serially sectioned and embedded. On the right hand side, we can see the Tyler technique in which the specimen is bisected vertically first and then one half is again bisected in the horizontal plane, which allows for simultaneous evaluation of the entire specimen for vertical and horizontal sections. Now, let us look us look at the types of the hair follicle based on the shaft diameter hair shaft diameter they can be divided into terminal that is greater than equals to 0.6 millimeter intermediate 0.3 to 0.6 millimeter and vellus then less than equals to 0.3 millimeter based on the phase of the hair cycle this can be anagen catagen and telogen anagen they comprises the follicles in the growing phase in which 
in the anagen phase the bulbs are embedded in the subdermis and they show all the layers of the normal follicle the inner root sheath it disintegrates at the level of the isthmus the catagen are the follicles in the transitional phase to the regression they comprises 1% of the scalp follicles the hair shaft uh, retreats upward in this catagen the outer root sheath shrinks and the follicular epithelium it undergoes apoptosis the telogen these are the follicles in the regression phase it comprises up to 15% of the scalp follicles telogen phase lasts for 3 months and uh, the the keratinized hair shaft undergoes degenerated degenerative involution as a serrated bright keratin mass which is surrounded by the outer root sheath the telogen germina units or the tgus uh, form below the club hair these are the basaloid palisaded epithelial strands remnants after the club hair is uh, shed and no apoptosis can be seen at this point this is the telogen in in its end stage let us look at the portions of the hair follicle the hair follicle is comprised of a permanent and a non permanent portion the permanent portion is the upper portion that does not cycle and includes the isthmus and the infundibulum the infundibulum is the area from the surface to the entrance of the sebaceous gland the isthmus is the area from the entrance of the sebaceous duct to the insertion of the erector pili muscle the non permanent portion is the lower portion which is the cycling cycling part of the follicle that reproduces the hair shaft it's made up of bulb with the dermal papilla and the supra bulbar part up to the adamson's fringe that is the upper margin of the keratogenous zone the follicular unit the follicular unit it comprises of the erector pili muscle these are the erector pili muscle you can appreciate the sebaceous lobules the vellus anagen telogen and the terminal anagen can be seen now looking at the follicular levels on the horizontal sections at the bulbar level we can see the randomly distributed bulbs in the fat composed of matrix keratinocytes and the hair follicle pigmentary units at the supra bulbar level we can see uh, this bulbs uh, hair follicles along with the sweat coils in the isthmus we can see the hair follicles organized in the hexagonal follicular unit surrounded by loose connective tissue which contains the blood vessels nerves etc infundibulum is the site where two three hair shafts exit the scalp through a common ostium the follicles at the supra bulbar level it uh, has got a resemblance to the bouquet of the roses on the right hand side you can see the sweat coils can be appreciated in this micro photograph the follicles at the isthmus level see how does the follicular unit look like a hexagonal unit comprising of the sebaceous glands these are the fo follicles and this has got a resemblance with the uh, water lilies uh, floating in a pond this is the anagen follicle at a closer look uh, the anagen follicle it comprises of the hair shafts which is made up of cuticle cortex and the medulla the inner root sheath this comprises of the hairless layer huxley's layer and the cuticle layer both of the, uh, all the three cannot be appreciated on light microscopy the outer root sheath extends from the bulb to the infundibulum where it is continuous with the interfollicular epidermis uh, 
Outside this, we have the vitreous layer or the basement membrane which separates the outer root sheath from the connective tissue sheath. And last, there is the connective tissue sheath which is the dermal sheath. This is the catagen follicle. The catagen follicle, here the hair shaft retreats the upwards. The outer root sheath shrinks and the follicular epithelium undergoes apoptosis. Is surrounded, this catagen follicle is surrounded by the thick and vitreous layer. The telogen follicle. The telogen follicle, you can in this picture microphotograph, you can see the keratinized hair shaft undergoes degenerative involution as a serrated bright keratin mass, which is sur uh, surrounded by the outer uh, shrunken outer root sheath. On the right hand side, you can appreciate the telogen germinal units, which uh, form below the club here. This comprises the basaloid palisaded epithelial strands which are the remnants after the club here is shed and no apoptosis can be seen in the telogen germina unit. This slide has got the visual resemblance between the different stages of the hair follicle with the day-to-day -day flowers. So, how do we build our pathology report? We have to assess the follicular architecture. We have to count the follicular units. We have to count the follicles. The follicles in the terminal anagen, terminal catagen, vellus anagen, vellus telogen follicles. We have to establish the vellus terminal is to vellus ratio establish the telogen percentage and comment on any associated findings such as the perifollicular fibrosis, inflammatory infiltrate, fragmented hair shafts, etc. This slides give us the average normal follicular ratios and the counts. So normally on a 4 mm biopsy, we can have a follicular units up about 10 to 14 follicular units, follicular density about 38 to 40, terminal anagen 31, terminal telogen approximately 2, vellus uh, stages uh, 5, fibrous trimmers, what are fibrous trimmers? These are the residual fibrovascular structures that form the non-permanent portion at the onset of the catagen and they are increased in case of alopecia. The terminal is to vellus ratio will be greater than or equals to 4 is to 1. The telogen count will be less than 15%. Here, this uh, micro photograph, we can see the follicular count in case of an advanced androgenetic alopecia. How? So, this picture, it shows approximately 14 follicular units, 27 follicular density, the terminal anagen as indicated by the red boxes are 5, the terminal telogen indicated by the yellow boxes are 4 in number, vellus anagen indicated by the teal boxes are 16 and the vellus telogen are indicate, also indicated by the teal boxes are 2 in number. The black boxes indicate the intermediate follicles. We do not include this in our count. So what happens? The terminal is to vellus ratio is 9 divided by 18. So that is 0.5 is to 1. So this is a case of advanced androgenetic alopecia. These are the average follicular counts and ratios in case of normal along with comparison with different diseased conditions. So uh, in normal, this uh, follicular units are about approximately 13, which is decreased in case of alopecia areata incognito. The terminal follicles are reduced in case of androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata incognito. 
the vellus follicles are increased in case of alopecia areata incognito and androgenetic alopecia. Fibrous tumors are also increased in androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata incognito. The anagen to telogen ratio uh, is decreased in case of androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata incognito. The terminal is to vellus ratio is decreased in both of this condition whereas it is increased in case of chronic telogen effluvium. Let us look at the trichoscopic pathologic correlation in case of non-scarring alopecia. So in alopecia areata we can have on trichoscopy yellow dots dystrophic hairs exclamation hairs. Histologically what we can get empty infundibulum and swarm of bees which are due to the lymphocytic infiltration. In trichotillomania on trichoscopy we will get broken hairs, flame hairs, V sign. On histology we will get pigmented cast at the hair shafts. In pressure induced alopecia on trichoscopy we will get black dots, broken hairs. And on histology, we will get telogen follicles. In lichen simplex chronicis, we will get broom like hairs. And on histology, we will get hamburgers sign of the hair shaft. Alopecia areata. Let us look at these conditions individually. So, alopecia areata is an autoimmune phenomenon. There are three stages acute which last for one to three months with follicular density preserved shorn of bees lymphocytic infiltrate subacute stage which is three to twelve months decreased follicular density increased catagen telogen follicles are appreciated in this stage chronic stage 12 months onwards miniaturized follicles are seen These pictures give us the different stages of alopecia areata at a glance. This is the acute stage. We can see a gradually increasing patch. And on histology, we will appreciate the swan of bees lymphocytic infiltrate at the bulbar level. Subacute stage, the persistent patch and increased telogen or ketogen count on histology. And the chronic stage, that is the appreciated by decreased follicular density and miniaturized follicles on histology. These are the dystrophic here on trichoscopy in alopecia areata. These are the exclamation hairs. Broken hairs due to fractures occurs after the hair exits your scalp. Here we can see the terminal telogen. What are the mimickers of alopecia areata? Early discoid lupus erythematosus may mimic alopecia areata. Periacrine inflammation, inflammatory dermatitis, interface dermatitis. Syphilitic alopecia can mimic alopecia areata acute stage by lymph plasma cells and perivascular infiltrate. Pressure induced alopecia, trichotillomania, may resemble subacute stage of alopecia areata. Coarse abnormal pigmented cast, trichomalacia, or the hamburger sign may be seen. Coming to the next condition, alopecia areata incognito. This is characterized by diffuse alopecia, acute hair setting, which leads to pronounced thinning of the hair of the whole scalp without any clinical or laboratory findings. Pool test is positive for the telogen roots. Prognosis is favorable. What are the histologic features of alopecia areata incognito? Horizontal sections uh, can be is done for follicular counts and the ratios preserved number of follicular units and decreased number of terminal follicles are seen. 
decreased terminal is to velus ratio uh, is an increased number of follicles in the catagen and telogen stages mean up to 37% uh, instead of normal count of up to 15% right hand side we can see there is decreased follicular terminal is to velus ratio and increased number of follicles in the catagen and the telogen Presence of increased number of telogen terminal units and or small basilar aggregates of cells with round, irregular or polygonal shape, lack of hair shaft and no apoptosis in the outer root sheath, which is referred to as small telogen follicles. This is the follicular unit of alopecia areata incognito, which shows the miniaturization of the follicles with increased telogen count. This is a telogen. Coming to the next condition, androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia is an androgen-related hair disorder characterized by gradual and progressive irreversible follicular miniaturization resulting in pattern men and women or diffuse women thinning in pre genetically predisposed individuals. Men do not require biopsy. Most biopsies are done in female. Histopathologic features. Increased number of vellus follicles accounting for decreased terminal is to vellus ratio of less than 4 is to 1. Telogen count may be slightly increased to about 19 to 20 percentage. Perifollicular lymphocytic infiltrate and mild fibroplasia can be seen in up to 70 percent of the cases. Here we can see the fibrous streamers, follicular miniaturization, We can see the terminal anagen, the terminal telogen. Along with the follicular miniaturization, we'll see the, uh, we are seeing this, uh, the compound follicles with perifollicular fibroplasia and lymphocytic infiltrate. Coming to the next condition, telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is a diffuse cyclic hair loss in women in whom there are systemic stresses, disease or physiologic situations which cause many scalp hairs to enter the resting phase prematurely. Acute telogen effluvium usually follows a childbirth. Acute illness lasts up to six months with full recovery of the hair. It rarely requires a biopsy. Chronic telogen effluvium, the hair loss is persistent, diffuse and involves the entire scalp but can be difficult to appreciate as many patients present with full head of hair, only thinning of the bitemporal sides can be seen. This is a clinical image of chronic telogen effluvium. Here we can see only a rear thinning of the bitemporal sites. Acute telogen effluvium, the normal is to normal terminal is to velus ratio, but increased tel telogen count up to 25%. Chronic telogen effluvium, it is indistinguishable from biopsies of the normal scalp. There is none or slightly decreased follicular density with normal greater than equals to 4 is to 1 or even increased terminal is to wellness ratio of 9 is to 1. The telogen count is usually normal or slightly increased in active phases of shedding as chronic telogen effluvium has a fluctuating course. This is a uh, microphotograph in a case of chronic telogen effluvium which shows uh, the follicular density up 
approximately of 47 follicles and the terminal villus ratio in this case is 7 is to 1. Coming to the next condition, trichotillomania. Trichotillomania, it's a form of traumatic alopecia characterized by round or bizarre areas of hair loss due to forceful pulling and plucking. Whereas trichotillomania, it's an areas of hair loss due to rubbing of the scalp. It presents in the similar way or as ill-defined patches of decreased hair density that can be associated with lichenification of the skin. Trichotillomania, in this case, we can get normal or slightly decreased hair follicles and trichomalacia, up to 40% of the cases. What is trichomalacia? It refers to the hair shafts that are abnormal in shape and pigmentation, usually have small diameter or are fragmented. Here we can also get catagen telogen shift in up to 70% follicles, pigmented cast, zip and the button sign can be seen. In this uh, picture, we can see the pigmented cast forming zip and the on the right hand side, this is the button sign. This is the trichoscopic image showing the broken hairs and on this image we can appreciate the pigmented cast the trichomalacia detached and collapsed inner root sheath and the pigmented hair cast at this lower part our next condition is lichen simplex chronicus it's a chronic pruritic condition characterized by lichenified erythematous scaly plaques that occur as a result of constant scratching and rubbing of the skin. Scalp is one of the most common locations. Epidermal hyperplasia with irregular lengthening of the retirages, orthokeratosis, hypergranulosis can be seen on vertical sections overall. Preserved follicular architecture, normal number of terminal follicles with increased catagen telogen count, decreased sebaceous glands, infundibular hyperkeratosis, hamburger sign, and classic gear wheel sign can be seen. This is a case of lichen simplex chronicus showing orthokeratosis, irregular acanthosis, hypoplastic sebaceous glands, and fragmented hair shafts. Uh, this is again a, in a case of lichen simplex chronicus. We can see the gear wheel sign, the jagged acanthotic projections of the outer root sheath. Uh, of the hair follicle at the level of the infundibulum can be seen on this horizontal section. Right hand side we can see, uh, see the gear wheels. This big microphotograph shows infundibular hyperkeratosis. This microphotograph shows the beautiful hamburger sign. There is longitudinal breakage in the hair shaft with accumulation of the proteinaceous material and RBCs in the cavity, which resembles this uh, hamburger on the right hand side. Here we can see the trichoscopic image of a case of lichen simplex chronicus showing the classic broom hairs. Again we can appreciate the hamburger sign, follicular acanthosis. The next condition is tenia capitis. Tenia capitis is a 
contagious dermatophyte infection of the scalp and the hair. Main causative pathogen in tinea capitis is trichophyton, anthrophilic and microsporon which is zoophilic. Hair invasion is classified as ectothrix, endothrix or the favors. Ectothrix inv uh, infections potentially spread rapidly, whereas the endothrix and the Faber's infections are less contagious. Three patterns are recognized the inflammatory, non inflammatory black dot pattern, non inflammatory seborrheic dermatitis pattern, and the inflammatory or the inflammatory tinea capitis or carrion. Here we can see A and B are the non-inflammatory black dot pattern. C is the inflammatory seborrheic dermatitis pattern and D is the inflammatory carrion pattern. In the ectothric infections, the hyphae and the spores, they cover the outside of the hair which results in the destruction of the cuticle. The endothrix infection, the inside of the hair shaft is invaded only by round and box like arthropods and not by hyphae. In inflammatory tinea capitis, carrion dense mixed inflammatory cells comprising of neutrophils, plasma cells, eosinophils, lymphocytes and histiocytes uh, is seen. These are the fungal spores. Again, it shows dense inflammatory infiltration, inflammatory tinea capitis. Our next condition is lichen planopilaris. Lichen planopilaris is a follicular form of lichen planus. It's a rare, it's a primary lymphocytic psychiatrical alopecia which is characterized by irreversible hair loss and scarring. Clinical patterns are patchy, one or more patches that start on the vortex and expand, diffuse. The vortex is initially affected but patches can occur anywhere Patterned or fibrosing alopecia in a pattern distribution overlap between LPP and androgenetic alopecia. So these are the different types of the lichen planopilaris. This A shows the patchy and B is the linear form of lichen planopilaris. Histologic features, decreased number of follicles, altered follicular architecture with areas of follicular dropout and absent or diminished number of sebaceous glands. Eyes and the goggle signs are seen. Perifollicular lymphoid, lichenoid interface lymphocytic infiltrate involving the permanent portion of the hair follicle is seen. So this is the goggle signs. Uh, the A is goggle sign. Uh, we can see the normal infundibular ostium and uh, C it resembles the aviator's goggles. Goggle signs are formed by fusion of the outer root sheath of fused follicles with concentric fibrosis and lichen lichenoid infiltrate encircling the goggles. This is the microphotograph of lichen planopilaris showing the goggles, the syringoma-like structures, fragmented hair sharp, decreased sebaceous glands, follicular dropout. Uh, 
again another microphotograph of lichen planus pylorus showing the consumed follicular epithelium concentric fibrosis lichen lichenoid inflammation follicular scar with fragmented hair shaft Our next condition is discoid lupus erythematosus. It's the most common form of cutaneous lupus erythematosus. 30 to 50 percent cases affect scalp. It presents as a well demarcated erythematous scaly flux with hair loss, atrophy, hypo or hyperpigmentation with follicular plugging. These are the pictures, clinical images of DLA showing the hair line involvement by this erythematous flux. On histology, both horizontal and vertical sections are useful to make the diagnosis. On vertical sections, we can appreciate interface dermatitis, vascular degeneration involving the dermoepidermal junction, thickened basement membrane, periadnexial lymphoid cell infiltrate, and mucin in the dermis and subdermis in a diffuse pattern. The epidermis shows atrophy or atrophy alternating with hyperplasia. This is a biopsy proven case of DLE with a brown patch and here we can appreciate the pigment incontinence. Again a microphotograph of DLE showing thickened basement membrane, pigment incontinence, hyperkeratosis, periacrine lymphoid cell infiltrate and telangiectasia. On horizontal sections, the main features include interface dermatitis, thickened basement membrane involving the follicular epithelium, pigment incontinence, and absent sebaceous glands. The follicular infoldibular are plugged by keratin. The lymphocytic infiltrate extends the follicular epithelium and eccrine glands as well as in a perivascular pattern with red blood cells extravasation in the early case corresponding to follicular red dots. Here we can see the follicular red dots with the keratotric plug and interface dermatitis. Again, the lymphoid follicles with pericrine lymph inflammatory infiltrate follicular uh, interface, the keratotic plug and pigment incontinent. Let us now summarize. What are the clues in case of non-scarring alopecia? Fibrous tumors are seen in case of alopecia areata, zip and button signs are appreciated in trichotillomania. Pigmented casts are observed in case of alopecia areata as well as in trichotillomania. Hamburger sign, the beautiful hamburger sign is seen in trichotillomania, trichotillomania and lichen simplex chronicus. Swanopis appearance is found in case of acute stage of alopecia areata. The clues in case of scarring alopecia, the eyes and the goggle sign, number of the compound follicles, hair shafts in the fibrous tumors, follicular triad, dense mixed inflammatory infiltrate and dilated eccrine ducts, that is the syringoma like structures. This is a beautiful image showing the eyes and the goggle signs, how the eyes are formed. The owl size are seen when the fusion occurs between the connective tissue sheets of the follicles. The hair shaft with a inner root sheath, if present, it looks like the eyes, that is the pupil and the iris. Whereas the outer root sheath, the concentric fibrosis, look like the feathers of the owl eyes. Along with there is this inflammatory infiltrate. So these are the fibrous streamers. Along with this fragmented hair shafts. This is again dense inflammatory infiltrate.
now what are the uh, classic features uh, some pearls uh, early dearly may mimic alopecia areata so we have to look for interface dermatitis pericrine lympho inflammatory infiltrate coexistence of alopecia areata with other hair disorders such as trichotillomania may occur pigmented cast within the hair canals of the vellus follicles it favors alopecia areata over trichotillomania trichotillomania may be indistinguishable from acute traction alopecia on histology so this is uh, the last slide of the seminar and i hope you enjoy this uh, whole slide seminar thank you for your patience hearing if you have any questions please post in the comment section thank you